whenever you're ready. Oh my God. <laughs> Jessica. I've never been called a fox. <laughs> Dana. That's a classy name for a Harry. I like it classic. Okay. Do you? <laughs> Welcome to the Rants and Raves podcast. Sure. Out with the bad and in with the good, motherfuckers. That's right. Jessica. Dana. Hi. Hello there. Happy 2020. Happy 2020 indeed. Welcome to the Rants and Raves podcast. I am Dana Powell. I'm Jessica Young. And, and we, we are here to rant, rant and rave. 2020 edition. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Why does it feel like I haven't seen you in a month? Because I think you haven't seen me in a month. It's kind of been a long time. It's been huh? a long time. It's so weird. The holidays were lovely. cavernous, <laughs> <laughs> lovely but long. They really were. They really were. I mean, I enjoyed. Well, we'll get into it. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> it really was a much needed break, but maybe too much of a break in many ways. Yeah, it, there was a lot. I felt like I was in a vortex yeah. for two weeks. Yeah, and then I've been in bed for like three days straight. Uh, yeah. Yeah, because I was exhausted. Well, happy 2020, everyone. We're excited to be back. Indeed. Jessica, do you want to tell people how to contact us? Sure. If you aren't already, and I know all of you aren't, why don't you hop on over to social media? It's fun, guys. Follow us at the Rants and Raves podcast on both Facebook and Instagram for anecdotes, fun times. You can DM us. You can comment on the weird things that we post. <laughs> Fun little isms that you're not going to get through the vocal waves of the podcast. We also have a website, www.therantsandravespodcast.com. You can contact us directly through the button on that. We also have an email, therantsandravespodcast at gmail.com. Yay. Get involved, everybody. Get involved for 2020. Yeah. (laughs) Please rate, review, subscribe. That helps us. We really want to grow this year. Yep. Last year, so when and you our, guys helped us grow you quite guys a bit last year. So much, we came out the gate so strong. Mm-hmm. You guys are so dedicated. Yep, we enjoy doing this so much, and it's because of you guys. Exactly. So please give us a five star review. Is that? <laughs> Ask for what you want. (laughs) Or just review us, rate us, whatever it is, because that keeps us relevant. Yeah. It's not like an ego thing. Yeah. It keeps us in a list where people can find us. New people find Mm -hmm. us. Yeah. So it helps us be able to share this cuckoo nest that we've built together. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) Jessica, how was your holiday? It was great. The first half was amazing. The second half, I got very sick, which was not fun. But yeah. the silver lining is, at least it happened before I went back to work. Oh. <laughs> um, but I will tell you, I watched a lot of movies. We yeah. got screeners and I watched almost every movie that's kind of up for nomination currently. You're so good. I have a hard time because so many of them are depressing. I watch the ones that are not depressing. Yeah. I mean, I haven't seen all of them. I will tell you my pick for film of the year is Parasite. Like, I have to see it. It's so good. I can't wait. I, don't tell me. Don't I didn't me. want to see it because I thought it was a horror film. No, it's a, not. A, because of the name, and B, I'm like, Koreans Korean love horror and films. It's so good at and horror, yes, but it's not a horror film. It's so phenomenal. The entire ca- they. I am certain will win Best Ensemble at the SAG Awards. Wow. It's phenomenal. To me, it's a real close tie between that and Joker for Best Films oh, of the God, Year. Oh, God, Joker. Joker really is depressing, but it's so good. It's so sad and depressing, but... I will give you one gem. I was supposed to go to a screening with my friend of Rocket Man. Oh, yes. Which I haven't watched yet. Either. I watched it last night. It's fun. It's it's fun. Yeah. It's not like earth shattering, but yeah. I, I enjoyed it. So we were going to go to the screening at Paramount. Oh, cool. And then we found out that Elton John was going to be at the Q&A. <gasps> so I wanted to go even more, but we were trying to get in. It was a hot mess there. Serious traffic. And everybody was trying to get into the same gate, which is always where the screenings are. If you go to Paramount, well, right. it was on the other side, apparently. Oh. So my friend looked at me. It was already a half an hour just for us to get in the gate. And she goes, I don't know if I can deal with this traffic. Can you? I'm like, I don't. I don't need to. I'm right. fine either way. We made a swift beeline. We made it in eight minutes flat. And if you know me, that's world record breaking because I drive like a grandma. We went and saw cats instead. Uh-uh. We're, you have to wait till I see it so that we can talk about it. I just want to tell everyone not to go unless you are ready to laugh and laugh like you've never laughed 
in your life. I read an article that was just scathing reviews. <laughs> Unforgivingly bad. <laughs> There's nothing redeeming. But it was so funny. Like the the article was so funny. I mean, you see my mouth is already on the ground. Yeah. Idris Elba, I I can't. Come okay. On. Even he does not get a pass in this movie. Dame Judy Dench. I know. There's amazing Ian McKellen. Ian McKellen, that that is the one that put me over the edge. I heard he has the best worst cat moment. Yep. That he drinks out of a water bowl. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Yes, yes, yes. Okay, well, we can't talk any more about it because I have to see it so that we can do it together. But I will tell you that my friend started laughing. I'm not joking. Like, I think two seconds into the movie starting, and she has a very infectious laugh. And when she started laughing, like, the whole theater heard it. It wasn't discreet. (laughs) The whole theater started laughing. Oh, no. So the silver lining of this is it was kind of like going to see the Rocky Horror Picture Show. Yeah, it sounds like it uh-huh. or The Room or something uh-huh, uh-huh. And like a, an audience experience. You're going to die. I think you might be angry. I don't know that I want you to see it. <laughs> you might be like really angry at it. It's that bad. Wow. OK. <laughs> well, I spent the holiday driving back and forth between St. Louis and Springfield every two uh. days. <laughs> No, it was lovely. It was great to have time with my family. You know, we got delivered a bit of a blow Mm -hmm. on the last day of 2019. So keep my family in your prayers. We'll be okay. (laughs) But, you know, I've said that there's some health issues in Mm -hmm. my family and and that is going to continue this year. But that's all right. We will rise together. Um, But I did have a lovely time with my family. It was just exhausting. Well, that's a lot of driving. And yeah, Um, I got to tell you, though, my little guy. Mm -hmm. Good Lord. He was an angel. He was an angel. He was so delightful (sighs) every bit of the way. So there was only one time where he got sassy with me and I was like, well, you haven't slept in like three days. So he stayed up to like 11 o'clock every night. What? I mean, it was crazy. I'm a terrible mother. I did get a chance to see my St. Louis girls. Shout out to Erica and Katie. And they said very nice things about you. That's very sweet. I hope I meet them one day soon. I know. I hope so, too. And, (laughs) And my friend Katie, she said she might write in. Um, so I won't talk too much but uh, about what she said, but uh, we helped her through a hard time, Aww. our show did, and that just made me cry. That makes <laughs> me happy. I know, it's like, that's the reason we do this. Yes. So anyway, holidays were lovely. I got really great things. I must have been a good girl. That's awesome. And true to myself i was annoyed at dan tipton because i thought he didn't get me anything and then he got me like the best thing ever oh and the way he presented it to me was he bought a whole bunch of wood letters and said this is a puzzle your hint is it's a person now figure it out and um is it idris elba no i wish (laughs) (laughs) no but it's equally as fun i think oh my god in bruno mars so I finally right. am going to get to see Bruno Mars. <gasps> oh, I how wanted exciting. To for so long. Oh, he's a hell of a performer. Yeah. And he's going to go with me, which also is Okay, that's really abnormal. cute <laughs> and romantic. That's so fun. Yeah, so that was, I must have been a very good girl this hey, year. Hey, if needed, I offered a babysit that night. Oh, thank you. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, Ooh, holidays that's awesome. were great. That's great. Yeah. We'll talk a little bit about the new year coming up. Should we go ahead and just transition into rants? Let's do it. Okay, so I'm up first this week. All right. I want to rant about, and maybe this isn't so much a rant as more of a PSA. Okay. I'm not using myself as an example because clearly I'm an egomaniac. <laughs> That's why I have a podcast. Uh, (laughs) So ridiculous. But I want to talk about not overwhelming ourselves Mm -hmm. for the new year. Mm -hmm. And the reason I want to is because I noticed my, I caught myself doing that Mm -hmm. over the last four days. I started, you know, we put so much pressure. I know there's been a backlash against New Year's resolutions, which I actually do think is kind of healthy. Yeah. Because we frequently set ourselves up for failure. Yes. And it's like, we know we're not going to stick to these resolutions. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, We're mm -hmm. all doing the best we can. Yeah. Let's not get overwhelmed. And I'm saying this to myself, but I'm hoping that it, it I almost said ministers to <laughs> <laughs> some old, some old verbiage haunting me, mm-hmm. but uh, is relatable to others. Yes. Because I found myself, I started thinking, okay, 
the new year's starting obviously i want to lose weight <laughs> obviously every year <laughs> since the day i was born okay. i want to learn to do this this year i want to learn to do that this year i've got to work on my vo i need to get this other thing going like all the things that you need to record a video of you playing your kalimba yes right mm-hmm. i need to learn how to play the kalimba like <laughs> <laughs> so I started feeling myself getting overwhelmed right. and it kind of came from a good place mm-hmm. of like, I'm going to hit the ground running. I'm going to make this a productive year. Right. It's been tough, but I'm going to keep growing. And that's all well and good until you can't sleep. Yeah. And we've talked a little bit before about toxic positivity. Yes. And we see all of this on social media where our friends are like, this is what I'm going to do this year. This is mm-hmm. my goal. Or... For me, in our line of work, (laughs) all of our friends who are on shows are like in different countries traveling Mm -hmm, right now. And it's mm -hmm. hard not to do comparison. Yeah. But comparison is the thief of joy, guys. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I just wanted to take it's a short rant, but I want to rant and say, don't be so hard on yourselves. Yeah. And and I'm including you and I in that, too. Totally. Because I I often say, you know, I'm a hustler, man. I'm a hustler. Mm -hmm. And. I did read an article about how we are in this generation of hustlers and how it's hurting us because we're stressing ourselves out. We're getting overwhelmed. You actually don't accomplish as much when you're concerned about it because when I get overwhelmed, Mm -hmm. I go to bed. Mm -hmm. Even if I'm not sleeping, I watch the entire new season of The Witcher. (laughs) (laughs) Too specific not to be real. (laughs) Another thing you and my husband can nerd out together. Oh my over, god, it was so good. I am not interested. It was so, good. I loved it. <laughs> so anyway, I just want you guys to 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 be kind to yourselves. Mm-hmm. And I and I want to read this. Um so I took part in a verse exchange, which basically is a chain letter, you know. I didn't. It's fine. I apologize. You don't have to apologize. Well, somebody else asked me before you did, so I got hit with it twice, and I was like, oh, there's going to be like 20 more, and then there wasn't. I clearly broke the chain, but... No, it's okay, because I, I did like do I it. I like I was back in 1987, and I couldn't handle it. I know. I told you, I in the green room dump, I'm normally not the person to partake in that. Mm-hmm. However... I knew I was being hard on myself for 2020 and I thought, Dana, it's just one email. It's yeah. about positivity. Who cares? No, totally. And for me, it's what I needed. I have gotten back some of the most lovely, amazing things from even from people I didn't know. Well, now I feel really bad. About well, sorry, myself. Jessica. I'm just kidding. Yeah. Well, I'm, gonna I'm share totally with you. okay with it. Trust me. I'm going to share with you one thing that I did get that I loved. And, and this is the perfect point to talk about it. And I will right. say if you have children in the car, plug their ears because I'm just going to read it word for word. And oh. I'm sorry about the language, but Spoiler. it's a good good message Mm -hmm. so explicit language alert as if we ever warn anyone (laughs) but still here we go so here's this quote and it's from jordan sarah weatherhead Hmm. and it says i'm so fucking sorry they put so much pressure on you you're not a fucking instant pot you're a human being and you're doing great just breathe so Mm. we're gonna breathe here in a minute because we always do but Mm -hmm. i want you guys to remember that We put so much pressure on ourselves. There's pressure on us from other places. There's pressure on us in the new year. Every gym is running a sale and you tell yourself you're going to go. You're not. It's okay. Do what I did and order a teeny tiny stair stepper on Amazon. (laughs) (laughs) Which is very cute and very compact. It's very tiny and it tells me how many calories I'm burning and stuff like that. And who knows if I'll use it, Jessica, but I'm trying. Well, you're very coordinated on it and I can assure (laughs) you. Jessica. Yeah. And I was really impressed because I, even though it's stationary, I would take one step on that and be like, whoa, and go flying across the room. But I didn't want it to take up space in my in my house because then I get angry at it. I know, but you also I'm amazed at your balance. I would oh, need thanks. to have that facing a wall so I could go, whoa, and like <laughs> am instantly hands on the wall. Can I tell you when I put it in my cart to buy it, uh-huh. you know how Amazon also suggests other things that other oh, customers God. have bought uh-huh. with it. I'm sure they have. <laughs> it suggested to me a helmet. A, <laughs> it should have. It suggested a hemp pain relieving cream Uh huh. I was given one of those for Christmas go on okay I just think that would stink but anyway and also a really skimpy lingerie piece so oh, I was like I can't to tell to be sexy while you're working out <laughs> I can't tell if Amazon has high hopes for me mm-hmm. or is trying to shame me into using my, Jeez, <laughs> into Louise. Using my purchase 
So don't let Amazon or anyone else be hard on you guys. Seriously. <laughs> now I'm going to really stew on that. Did they want you to wear it while working out? Can I show you what it looked like? Yes. I, I took a picture of it. Or is and that the it goal? To my four friends. If you use our stair stepper, you can get into this sexy negligee. Right. That's what I'm not. You can get into sure. any sexy negligee, but will you look like the person in this picture? Well, after there's not using even a person in it. There's not even a person in it. So oh I feel like. God. I was going to show you. Now I can't find it. I don't know who I sent it to, but I'll send it to you at some point. Well, I will tell you uh, also to your point of this and not getting overwhelmed. You made a, a great point within there, too. It's like. I think part of why people get overwhelmed is with the comparing. Mm -hmm. So that is something we can all take the pressure off ourselves with. It's like yeah. just because someone else achieved this or is doing this, great and good for them. And they're that, on their own path. That doesn't mean you have to. It doesn't, and it doesn't mean, mean you're, you're gonna a failure do it. either. Correct. It really is true. It's such you know, comparison really is the thief. A hundred percent. And it's not fair to do to yourself, but it's hard not to. Yeah. And also with that overwhelming thing, I think part of what made me start getting overwhelmed is because and people who are in 12 steps will really identify mm -hmm. with this. But it's just about taking one day and one thing yes. at a time. Because when I started looking at the overall picture, like I don't it's have to do all these things I want to do in the next two weeks. Or 24 hours as I like to try exactly. to amass. I know, it's ridiculous. So I just want you to remind yourself, you know, I have that aloe the aloe app that tells me yes. it reminds me three times a day it's all okay just breathe and if you don't have an app to remind you <laughs> just in your brain hear me going it's all okay just breathe you guys just breathe we're in it together we don't have to do it all today we're okay it's true <laughs> So that's, very true. that's my rant is like society is set up and we've set ourselves up mm -hmm. to be really hard on ourselves and push mm -hmm. and it's overwhelming. And let's try not to do that. Right. Let's try. Well, my uh, rant is going to really pale in comparison. Yours is like <laughs> thoughtful, thought provoking. It doesn't make anyone angry. It might even make them a little sad. It might make them feel better. <laughs> Mine is very petty. <laughs> Very, very petty, but you know what? Fool me once. Yeah. Shame on me. Fool, Fool me twice. twice. Can't shame. get fooled again. Shame on you, Jessica. <laughs> I just pulled the George W. Bush version. <laughs> <laughs> Can't get fooled again. <laughs> I am really sick of people, and I know certain people who do this on the reg, both to my home or when they're going to other people's homes. If you're bringing something to a party, uh -huh. And it's not for the host, like for another time. And like, by the way, when somebody brings me wine, I'm always like, oh, do you want this now? Like, I may not even be drinking, but like, oh, would you like me to open this? Did you want some red wine? I'm happy to open it. I don't like try to hide what they've brought that's special for us. Um, right. Except for my one friend. Oh, God. She always used to make a coffee cake and bring it. She'd be like, hide this. I'm like, what? She's like, put it away. It's for you tomorrow morning. Oh, that's sweet. But it was the best. She'd make a coffee cake. She's like, now tomorrow when you wake up, you have something to eat and you don't have to worry about cooking after Aww. host. It's lovely, right? Anyways, anything somebody brings, and we had a lot of people over on Christmas, and it was lovely. We put out all of it to share, okay? And I was, like, begging people to take things home. I wasn't invited. Home. You were out of town. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and you really missed out. Oh, no. I got the annual Honey Baked Ham, <gasps> which was the gift that kept on giving. Uh, you know, I'm trying not to eat piggies. I know. Uh, I know. We made uh, arancini, the fried... Sicilian rice balls. That sounds amazing. Oh my God. Alan did all the preparations for it. And then I'm very proud to say I sat there and made them. One of my friends helped me on Christmas Day. And then the next day when nobody wanted to do anything, I was like, you know what? We have so much leftover filling and fixings to make them. I'm going to make as many as I can until the rice runs out. And then I'm done. Yeah. And that was great. That was a, a big deal for me because normally I would have been like, I'm not doing that. <laughs> I committed. Back to my um, original thought. Uh -huh. If you're going to bring something to a party, uh, then bring something that you want to drink. Okay. okay. I just want you to know I'm how pointing, hard you're wagging your finger right like now. Like with a <laughs> real angry erect finger just straight <laughs> out. say erect finger. <laughs> <laughs> but let me tell you something. Don't you be bringing a bottle of some Jose Cuervo. Okay. Okay. If you plan on dipping into my fancy ass tequila that's hidden at the back of the cabinet. Oh, goodness. That's for like a once a year toast or something. Did somebody go digging through your cabinets? No, but it's like, uh, 
I know a few people that do this, but somebody came with some like ghetto ass drink that nobody wants, <laughs> including themselves, apparently. And then like, what do you guys have? It's always that whatever they bring, it's never enough. And they're always right. wanting to know what I had. It's like, buddy, you're looking at it. Right. Okay. <laughs> I set up a nice little bar area and we've got wine and I bought special Christmas beers and all that crap. Yeah. We ain't yanking out the Johnny Walker blue label. Uh, Johnny Walker. I, Alan has stuff that he's hidden. It's like 60 year old single age. Oh, fancy. Single malt scotch. I don't even know what it is. Wow. Well, you didn't pull that out. No, that's for him if he wants to and again like not trying to like just <laughs> give crappy stuff to our guests but I'm saying like please don't come to the party with some crap that even you don't want to drink now, just so you can be like here about, here's my contribution. What if what about if you come to the party with crap you want to drink? That's fine. Because you know I've told you Dan Tipton gets mad at me. He says I'm a drunk college girl when I bring Captain Morgan's Long Island Iced Tea Mix. <laughs> okay, no. If that's what you like, whatever. That's why people are like, oh, I'm sorry, my beer wasn't good enough. And now I'm like, no, it wasn't. That's why I brought my own. I don't Ooh. drink Coors. <laughs> So I'm going to hide my North Coast in your vegetable drawer so that the other party goers don't drink it, which is always what happens. Everybody brings like a 24 pack of Budweiser that they got at Costco. <laughs> and I bring four beers that cost me $20 and hide them and have one and go back for them and they're all gone. You have to calm down. Breathe. Breathe. <laughs> it's okay. Just breathe. <laughs> Like I said, I feel guilty. It's so petty, but it's the repeat offenders. It's repeat. Yeah, that's what gets. gets I'm like you livid. Up. Like I had lasers coming out of my eyes. I'm like, oh, you don't want to drink this either. Right. So why did you think anyone else here did? Hey, and it's gonna sit in my house until the next time you come over. Okay. Maybe the next time somebody does that, you only offer them that when they come. Oh my god, hilarious! Or you just automatically pour. Who it. wants to do a shot of Jack Daniels? <laughs> mm-hmm. Not me. <laughs> so, Jerks. if you're gonna bring something to a gathering, make sure it's something that you would like to enjoy as well. And equal to everything there. Either bring something that the host maybe likes or that mm-hmm. you hope they will. Or yes, just bring something that is your beverage. To I always bring something for the host and for myself. Yeah, yeah. If you were having something, I would bring a bottle of something for you uh-huh. as a host gift. I'm not trying to put that on anyone. Uh-huh. That's just what I would do. I bring something for you, whatever it may be. Unless they say don't bring anything. I I'm bad. When we were in St. Louis, we were invited to friends and they were like, you don't have to bring anything. We brought a couple bottles of wine, but. Also, yeah, but see, you still brought something. Even if you said that, and I understand some people mean it, they don't want anything or they don't want people spending the money and all that. But for example, if that was the case, I'd at least bring your kid a golden book. Oh, that's sweet. Or something. Do you know what I mean? Just like a little, I don't know. That's very nice. A notion. If there's a child, your child's getting a present. Whatever. Wow. Mm -hmm. My child can't stop talking about his melting snowman. (laughs) That made me so happy. I sent Jessica a video of how he wanted to save it to do with his dad. And then he just loved it. And we videoed it. It It was was so so cute. cute. And I'm so happy that Alan secured two more for him. The company (gasps) sold out of them. He's going to die. It's like a chocolate snowman that melts in hot chocolate. But has marshmallows inside and the marshmallows. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Well, you're a very lovely guest, Jessica. (laughs) (laughs) I try to be. Well, we should take a cleansing breath. I don't know what people ate or drank at your house. I will. I'm going to give you one more aside. I'm so sorry. Before the cleansing breath, two seconds. Okay. Also on New Year's, my friend made it clear. He said, we are covering the mains. Bring an appetizer or a dessert. So I brought both, right? Which I didn't have to, but I had so much stuff left over from Christmas. I'm like, I can bring him these unopened candies and this and that. And I'm going to make a really nice cheese plate. I got to his house. (laughs) I was the first one there. Uh-huh. He got mad that I showed up at eight on the dot. I, I even asked if I could come early because I wanted to see his kid. I said, I want to see the child more than I want to see you. Uh-huh. He was angry that I showed up on time because he <laughs> said nobody shows up on time. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Then I walked in and he had so much food on the table that I couldn't even put my cheese plate out. <laughs> and I looked at him. And I said, I'm so angry right now. I don't know what to do. You said in capital letters, please bring an appetizer or dessert. We have all the mains covered. I said, so that's what I brought. 
you have so much food. Are you having a hundred people tonight? <laughs> and he's sort of freaking. He goes, I got scared. I didn't think I'd have enough food. And blah da da da. That's so funny. So he was the like overcompensated in the other, other way because <laughs> he was funny. so worried. And by the way, everybody showed up with stuff. Of course they did. And he had one guest. The husband made a stromboli that would knock your socks off. Not as good as yours, Stacy Roommaker. I can assure you. I thought about you the whole time. <laughs> It was delicious, but my friend Stacy, she makes a stromboli that is life changing. The husband made a stromboli, and the wife made homemade caramel filled gingerbread spiced cupcakes. What? I don't know; they looked like they were from a baking show. Wow! That was just one of the many people who brought stuff. So I was crying. If you ask people to bring something, be prepared. At least the kind of people he was friends with all really, really showed up. That's okay? awesome. They they granted. But he was worried that none of us would. So he went ahead and bought all the food. I can't. My mom was very upset. And we went to at least, let's see, Denise, my middle sister, went to two or three Walmarts on the way from Oklahoma. In from oh. Oklahoma. My grandma stopped somewhere. We stopped somewhere looking for ring bologna. They didn't have <laughs> ring bologna. And so then my grandma was like, no, I found it. I found it. And she she was like, I got two of them. I'll bring them. They were straight up just packages of deli sliced bologna. Hilarious. My mother was like, what? Was she so No, she was so mad. Because is so it the me, presentation of it? Yes. Uh-huh. uh-huh because uh-huh. it's round. So me and my sisters cut the slices into shapes of the crackers so that she wouldn't be upset. That's <laughs> hilarious. I wish you had taken. Oh, you didn't have one. I need to see what this ring bologna is. Yeah, I'll have to find a picture and uh-huh. send it to you. It's just a ring of baloney. Unbelievable. <laughs> okay, should we do our cleansing yes, breath? Yes, I'm sorry. No, it's okay. Okay, everybody, we're going to do a cleansing breath. I've heard from some listeners that they do it with us, which I makes me that. happy. Yes. You should, no matter where you are, even if you have to do it like privately. 100%. We're going to take a deep breath in and we're going to blow out all the bad mm-hmm. and all the frustration and all the overwhelmingness and all the <laughs> expectation is going to come out. Okay. Ready? Okay. In. And out <sighs> with the bad. Yay. That's right. All right. Well, we're moving into corners. We are. This is where you and I kind of swap because you have a great corner. Okay, that's true. Now I don't have to feel so bad. You do not at all. <laughs> and I have a really disturbing corner. <laughs> <laughs> Does that make you happy? Hey, disturbing's better than petty, isn't it? Well, I guess so. So this is while I was back home, we hung out with some friends mm-hmm. and the Keatings were some people we nice. hung out with. And JP Keating, Erica sent us the video of being assaulted by yes, her and her husband. The squeezy uh-huh, doll. <laughs> her husband JP was the one giggling at the side. I love it. And he sent me it's called damninteresting.com and there's just mm. like cool stuff on it. So this one is from there. It's by Erica Nesvold. The Mystery Lake of the Himalayas. And there's a picture. It looks beautiful. (laughs) It is not. Nestled in a valley high in the Himalayas in northern India is a small lake named Rup Kund, known locally as Mystery Lake. The area around Rup Kund Lake is uninhabited. At an altitude of over five kilometers, the lake is frozen for all but one month out of the year. Whoa. And ice storms occasionally pose a significant threat. The mystery concerns the origin of the occupants of the lake. No, not fish or other common lake dwellers, but hundreds of human skeletons. Nope. <laughs> Rupkund Lake, also known as Skeleton Lake, and its surroundings are littered with over 200 sets of human remains. The state of the skeletons indicates that they have been lying in and around the lake for many centuries. But their exact age and the cause of the mass death was unknown until 2004, when National Geographic sent a team of researchers to retrieve some of the skeletons for study. The National Geographic team discovered that the skeletons dated from 850 CE. I don't even know what CE is. I don't either. Most of the previous owners of the bones originated in Iran, although a few were from the local Indian population. Fractures in the skulls hint at the cause of death. Devastating blows to the top of the heads from rounded objects roughly the size and shape of a cricket ball Uh. or slightly larger than a baseball. There are no signs of injury to any other parts of their bodies. The research team finally concluded that a band of travelers from Iran traversing the mountains with locally hired porters was caught in a terrible hailstorm. Unable to seek shelter, they succumbed to the blunt trauma and their bodies tumbled down the steep slopes 
eventually collecting in the lake. Unbelievable. How crazy is that? That's so freaky, but also makes me, again, love the beauty of this world and all the weird idiosyncrasies. The fact that they can... That's... I'm sorry for my pause. I'm staring at that. So freaky. Only one month out of the year. How can they figure that out? Centuries later. Centuries later. I know. Through DNA or through studying bone mass or any, I, that's insane. That looks like the catacombs of France if uh-huh. uh, that are like under the subway system. Yeah. And it's only wow. not frozen one month out of the year. That's insane. Isn't that crazy? Absolutely insane. Thank you, DamnInteresting.com. Yeah. <laughs> that is interesting. Isn't it? Yeah. Okay. What'd you bring? Yours is much more okay, fun. So. <laughs> it's not so deadly. Although, I don't know if it's fun, but it's very uplifting uplifting, and it just shows you what one person can do. What one person can do or to be like, oh, I'm just one person or one vote or one set of arms or whatever. Everything counts. Okay, it is powerful and it can come from somewhere you do not expect. A hundred percent. So everybody, I'm sure, is well, well aware, um, if, unless you're living under a rock, that Australia is literally on fire right now. Yeah. It's been it's talked about for the last week. They've lost over 500 million native animals. Yeah. It's almost um, decimated the koala population. It's insane. There's been uh, a human death toll rising, the amount of structures and actual land mass that has been completely destroyed is unimaginable Mm -hmm. and uh, that's coming from two ladies who've been in a state that's been blazing up every year really bad yes but like the last two years have been catastrophic for us yeah my peaceful place burned yeah Mm -hmm. again surely you're aware of this australia thing and yes uh, a lot of times when there's tragedy going on nobody knows where to give money or everybody thinks oh i'll donate this or i'll bring clothes or that and sometimes they're so overwhelmed that by sending stuff you're overwhelming them even further because they have nowhere to keep it right they don't have a way to get it to people and all that so we all want to help, but instead of like, I don't want to blame anyone for having a knee jerk reaction for jumping to donate. Yes, donate, but do a little bit of research, research. if you can yeah. to see. And oftentimes there's a group which will then appropriate it to where it needs to go. So if you are not familiar with her, you will be you now. should be. Uh, Celeste Barber, who's someone that Dana and I have followed for a very long time. She I is love her. a personal hero. I adore her. She's an Instagram celebrity. Yeah. She every single day takes a video from a supermodel and recreates either the video or the picture like shot for shot. Funny. It's absolutely hilarious. It garnered her a national commercial with Carl's Jr. Uh Where they used to have like a girl in a bikini eating a hamburger. Now it's Celeste Barber chowing down on a burger. I love it. There's just something about the way she presents everything. It's super funny. It doesn't shame her for some reason. It's it's funny because it's basically saying That stuff is unattainable, you idiots. Yeah. Like, there's just, there's something so clever and witty and fun about everything she does. Also, it's not that there aren't people that look that good, but again, we're talking about, like, a very small percentage of people that look like a supermodel does compared to the average and she's not home. unattractive. No, In she's a very way. pretty woman. Yeah, but she's she so just has funny. a real body. Yeah, she's it's... a real woman. She's a mom. This is her wearing, you know, the tops of coffee, coffee lids, lids on hoops as <laughs> earrings. She's just funny. I love her. So she is Australian, and she went on her page and you know kind of made a call to action asking people to please donate because they're in such bad like the world is has their eyes on australia right now yes so she began a fundraiser this is monday right now that we are talking this episode is coming out tonight tonight you're (laughs) listening to it on tuesday she began the fundraiser on friday hoping to raise thirty thousand dollars in donations now that's a lot of money to raise right yeah for one person on Instagram, mm-hmm. yeah. So hoping for thirty thousand in three and a half days, she has now raised more than thirty million, million for the firefighters and victims of the bushfires. Thirty million. Now this is a woman who started doing something that made her <sighs> giggle on Instagram. Yes, she became famous for it, 
and look what this one person has done. Absolutely. The mailman uh, just came, if you're wondering. Hilarious. <laughs> just let us know. <laughs> I feel like it's Pee Wee's Playhouse. We should invite him in. <laughs> I'm going to read you guys a few key points on this. Her appeal has so far raised more than $32 million, So the number is climbing as, as we're we speak. speaking. Yeah. Donations have come in from all over the world thanks to her large social media following. Mm-hmm. Her mother-in-law has expressed her anger at the lack of support in Eden, New South Wales. Like, Mm -hmm. I know there's some areas that have had a horrible time getting any kind of support from their local areas. I'm not sure exactly the reasons why. I know that's not the first person that said that that I've read about. Mm -hmm. But Celeste's Facebook appeal for the New South Wales Rural Fire Service and Brigade set a target of 30,000. Three days later, okay... It's raised more than 32 million. Many Jeez. donations coming. I'm repeating this. I'm sorry. She has more than 1.8 million followers mm-hmm. on Facebook, 6.5 million followers on Instagram. Jeez. Including me and Jessica. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to throw out some people who made a huge donation. Uh, Keith Urban. Love him. Donated $500,000. Australian. Yep. Mm-hmm. Somebody else did 500,000. Now it's going to drive me nuts. It's a female. I I hope it comes to me. But people who donated were literally from around the world. That is part of what makes me happy Mm -hmm. when the world comes together, sadly, because of a tragedy, Mm -hmm. right? But she never thought that it would reach this level. And again, it's just knowing the power of just putting it out there. Even if you personally can't do it, you never know if someone else can. There are many things that I have come across in life because Dana reposted something that someone did or anyone for that mm-hmm. matter. I would have never seen it. I don't know that person or I don't follow it. Right? But I'm well, like, well, that's the basis of our show. Like yeah. you and I don't have the money to contribute to everything we talk no. about. We just don't. But my course of action in the hopes that it helps is that we share it. Yes. And someone who can and feels the moved to right. do so can help. Yes. Yeah. And like we said, if everybody gave a dollar, I know a dollar, one dollar or five dollars when you can. Look, I know. Times are and tight, also, but don't think like well, somebody else will do it. I don't have that following. I don't have. She was one person mm-hmm. that started off doing something silly that made her giggle. Yes. And look what she's able to do now. Totally. That's one person, one voice. Yes. It's amazing. And if 100 people give $5, that's $500. I mean, like, it's, yeah. It's Every little not bit Not just counts. for this, for anything, mm-hmm. you know? I'm, she doesn't listen to our show, but I wish she did. <laughs> I wish she was my best friend. And it's amazing what she's, she's done. She's the best. I love it. So, yeah, follow her if you're not already. Celeste Barber. She is an absolute delight. Really funny. She has a book out. She's touring. Is she coming to L.A.? I don't know. It would be impossible to see her. I know. Oh, she'd be amazing. But take heed because, again, one person putting that into action. Now, most of us don't have that many followers. No, but she started. But it doesn't matter. She wasn't famous. No. She started doing something silly. Yep. And And by the way, there are people that aren't famous that do something and it goes viral. And the next thing you know, someone's life has changed. There's tons of things that we profile on our show that we don't know the people. Right. We've just found it through other people sharing and sending to us and everything. It's It's pretty incredible. I'm going to have to move us along because if we're being real, Jessica, you got to go to work. I wish that wasn't. (laughs) So I'm going to move us into our rave. Yeah, let's do it. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. So for my rave, it's actually an odd one because I wouldn't think (laughs) that I would be raving about this. Okay. However, you shared it with me and I think it's lovely. Mm Mm-hmm. This is American Girls 2020 Girl of the Year is the first doll with hearing loss. Mm -hmm. And she's cool, man. American Girls 2020 Girl of the Year doll is Joss Kendrick. That's Mm -hmm. her name. J-O-S-S. Yeah. The new doll, which debuted on Good Morning America, is a competitive cheerleader and a surfer from Southern California. In the first for an American doll, American Girl doll, Joss has a hearing loss and she wears a hearing aid, which is cool because she's also a surfer. 
According to her story, Joss was born deaf in her left ear, but can hear some out of her right ear with the help of a hearing aid that comes with the doll as an accessory. Mm -hmm. Pursuing surfing and going all in with cheer, Joss reaches new heights and discovers a whole new side of herself. Whether she's on her surfboard or in the gym, Joss shows girls the importance of trying new things, pushing past stereotypes, and being a good team player. American Girl said in a statement unveiling the new character, they partnered with experts specializing in surfing, competitive cheerleading, hearing loss as well, as the portrayals of deaf characters in literature to create Joss. The company also announced a $25,000 donation to support the work of Hearing Loss Association of America, a national nonprofit representing people with hearing loss. The brand has introduced more diverse and inclusive dolls over the years, including dolls of different skin tones and ethnic backgrounds to make all girls feel seen or learn about Mm. another culture. According to their website, in addition, dolls are available without hair for anyone dealing with hair loss. Hearing aids, a service dog set, glasses, a wheelchair are all accessories that have been on the market, but hearing aids have not been part of the Girl of the Year dolls story before. The Joss collection is available on December 31st at AmericanGirl.com and all retail locations. I love it because she's like cool, even though she has what would be considered a disability. And I noticed too, you know, listen, all these companies aren't the best for Mm -hmm. sure, but they're trying at least. And I can appreciate that. Barbie had a big, big one for the end of the year of Sally Ride, Mm -hmm. the astronaut. Mm -hmm. Like, they're trying. They're trying. And I appreciate that. I think it's lovely. Also, just on the hearing tip and dealing with sign language in general, I have a friend who is an ASL interpreter. Uh And also, I'm fascinated because a lot of people I know started teaching their kids basic sign language as Mm -hmm. babies, which people do with a kid regardless of whether, whether they're they have hearing impaired yeah anything uh, not of the norm or not i used to have nanny a little girl i thought she was waving at me have yeah. i told you this no and i kept going hi and waving back and then she her mom signing. she was signing for <laughs> milk <laughs> <laughs> She's like, this idiot. Oh my god. This is the person you've paid to take care of me. She doesn't even know what milk is. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that I talked about this before the holidays. I don't. If I did, I apologize. But I'm throwing this out there because also you never think about how it's not just maybe somebody who's deaf or has hearing loss that does sign language. My friend that's an interpreter uh, works as Mrs. Claus during the holidays Uh and she was at a setup and there was a kid that clearly she could tell was scared Uh and was having some issues and the family was like I'm sorry and she's like it's fine. She was being very sweet and trying to accommodate and I don't know if I think the family then said like they were having difficulty getting the kid in. She said I'm sorry my son's autistic and this is just a little bit overwhelming for him so my friend as she's signing says does he sign Uh and the kid lit up and started signing back with her and the mom said oh my god yes so that was something that he learned in school that a teacher had worked on with him and it helps him communicate so he could sign so the family started crying of course the kid literally ran over to her and walked up and got on Santa's lap my point of saying this is people around us all the time have issues and different needs that we may not be aware of and I told my friend I'm like I know this wasn't your intention but you made that family's holiday oh yeah you are guaranteed guaranteed the first person that was able to communicate with their child in a different way and got to give them a normal if you will Mm -hmm. in quotes experience Mm -hmm. with something like Santa which is scary for most kids in general I don't know it made me cry when she was saying I just loved that so again people all over the world use sign language but it was fascinating for me to know now that like oh people that may be here find that is a different way for them to communicate Mm -hmm. and it's being taught in different areas and things like that so it's kudos beautiful. to anything putting awareness out there mm-hmm. making, and making other people aware yes for sure. <laughs> one more thing about because i'm thinking of the hearing aid specifically the show undone on amazon which is phenomenal oh, kate purdy oh yeah oh yes her, show. her, her animated so this is someone that we've so known good. for years who i was like what's undone but i know what you're wrote an about. incredible show for and it's amazon getting so many awards and accolations it's so good and the lead character has a hearing aid uh-huh yeah and so then she gets pissed and she takes it off and throws it so she doesn't have to, have to hear, hear anybody, anybody. Yeah, I love it. but yeah really cool that that's finally something that is that's, it's interesting being given because, attention in a different way yeah because it's something we've known about obviously yes. for ages when you 
you think of people on the spectrum and autism and stuff, that's kind of a new thing that we're mm-hmm. accepting and learning. But hearing loss has been around for as long as we have. Uh, yes. So the fact that we're just now kind of becoming more aware of it, right. it's kind of sad, but exciting at the same time. Mm-hmm. Anyway, I love it. Congratulations, American Girl doll. Yeah. You have impressed me. Exactly. Because normally I roll my eyes at you. Me too. Because I don't have girls, so... <laughs> <laughs> Okay. I love it. And she has a giant wind. I walked by at one of our fancy malls here, the, at Grove, the Grove, but they had a gigantic, like the window is Joss surfing in cool. the window, which I thought was really cool. That's awesome. Yes. All right. What did you bring for a rave today? Okay. My rave came from watching. Yes. I'm a real sucker for the Rose Bowl parade. Uh-huh. Did anybody else watch it? No. Okay. It's magical. And if you missed it, watch it next year I guess (laughs) but it's one of the things that's so cool about it is that it requires so much effort on the part of each team if you will that's making uh, whether it's a company or a show or whatever that's coming together to make these floats every inch of the float has to be covered in a natural material Mm -hmm. whether it's a flower or a corn husk absolutely beyond right so innovative what they do so In the parade, there are lots of different things that come about and people and groups that are marching that catch my attention. And this I loved. It was a a group of horses and I grew up with horses in my youth, Arabians specifically, which is the type of horse that's used for this group. This is Warrior Horses and their website is warriorhorses.org. It is a group hoping to change the forefront to fight pediatric cancer. Oh, wow. Yeah. So the founder, Ryan Melendez, and okay, Warrior Horses matches a child diagnosed with any type of pediatric cancer with a horse in their group, an Arabian horse. And for every thousand dollars they raise, they will match a warrior horse to a warrior kid. Once matched with their horse, the warrior kid will receive special access to his or her warrior horse through direct connection with the rider and owner. They will get to follow their horse throughout the year, receiving updates, show schedules, photos of the horse, and the ability to watch live feeds of their horses competing in the show ring. A special warrior ribbon will be awarded to the horse at national events and will be sent to their warrior kid with a photo. Perhaps even a shoe worn and or a lock of hair from their horse will be sent as well. Oh, cool. Mm -hmm. Warrior kids who are able will have the opportunity to meet and visit with their horse. A press release be sent out to local press and their connection will be wonderful to follow along and nothing lifts the spirit more than the love from a horse fighting alongside their child battling cancer. So the money raised goes to cancer research. Uh And this is also a way to take the, I don't want to say the pressure, but like kids have a horrible enough time battling cancer This is something that their hope gives them something else to put their focus on, something else to be active with, something to look forward to. And also horses are used a lot in therapy. It's actually called Mm -hmm. hippotherapy. Mm -hmm. You would think it would be like equine therapy, but hippo is the beginning. Is it the phylum name? I'm going way back in my biology days. But hippotherapy, look that up because my mom actually for years volunteered at a place called Windrush Farm in Massachusetts where the retired horses like Mm -hmm. that are older and like they're not going to be the stuff used in show rings anymore or for Mm -hmm. heavy riding they bring these horses and kids are brought in all the time and it is literally life changing horses are so majestic they're majestic and they're very intuitive Mm -hmm. I'm not just saying that like they are animals that come up they it's like a dog they sense when something's wrong Mm -hmm. they nuzzle you they respond to people's voices they recognize humans in the same way a dog and many other Mm -hmm. intelligent animals do, right? It's beautiful. So anything that can bring some kind of joy and therapy through the animals, especially with horses, please look that up if you have a family member with anything that could be, that they could be benefited by the therapy of these horses. I also have a friend I grew up with whose daughter has Rye syndrome and she became aware of this hippotherapy program and she said it was incredible for her daughter. So lots of love to anybody out there with a child fighting cancer and 
and warriorhorses.org. Yeah, they were beautiful, and I loved seeing them uh, march in the parade. That's really amazing. Yeah. I love it. I love it, too. Jessica. Dana. I think that's our show. I think it is. I can't believe that we've we made it to the end. I know. We did it. <laughs> we did do we're it, not, you guys. We're not a year into our show yet. No. But it's coming. It, exactly. It's coming up. I don't remember when our Almost. Year. It's mm, soon, like March. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, look forward to that. Yeah. Uh, I want to tell everybody how to get in contact with us. If mm-hmm. you know of a good news story, a hometown hero a national story that you think needs more attention, Mm -hmm. something funny, a comment on something we've said, whatever. Just hit us up, guys. You can contact us on Instagram and Facebook at the Rants and Raves podcast. You can find us on Twitter at raves underscore the. Still hate Twitter in 2020. Uh, Our website is therantsandravespodcast.com. There's a contact us button on there. Just click it. Or you can straight up email us at the Rants and Raves podcast at gmail.com. So I like to end every week with a weekly point to ponder. Mm-hmm. Sometimes they're silly. Sometimes they're things we love. Mm-hmm. Uh, sometimes they're just like interesting facts. This week we wanted to, we were both just obsessed over the holiday. Totally. About a movie. And we want to encourage uh. you guys to see it. it <laughs> Jessica's already crying. <laughs> it is, it's good. It will, it probably will make you cry, but like beautifully. Mm-hmm. It's the Mr. Rogers movie with Tom Hanks. Won't be- You Be My Neighbor. Won't You Be My Neighbor. It is so good. Mm-hmm. Matthew Reese is phenomenal. I mean, it's it's just great. There were sometimes I was not into watching it. Mm-hmm. So I was like playing a game on my I phone while it started. Thought it was going to be Forrest Gump doing Mr. Rogers. Admittedly yeah. So. But he really disappeared into that role. Mm-hmm. And I just want to say I have not watched the documentary. Oh. Because I'm, oh. I know it's going to make me ball. Oh. So I haven't watched the actual, which is watch on Watch both. I know. It's on HBO right now. You can still catch oh, it. Oh, please watch it. But if you haven't seen this movie, at the very least see it. It's beautiful. And I really am convinced mm-hmm. that Mr. Rogers, Fred Rogers, I think he was a living angel on I Earth. agree. He wasn't perfect. And he knew that. Mm-hmm. He was aware of well, it. he was a human. He was a human, but a human angel. Okay, he, so I'm begging. I'm sorry. I, no, go ahead. You have to watch the documentary. You. You, Dana Powell. I, but my I just off. called you Powell's because, <laughs> because of your, that's my how, Instagram. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> you, Dana Powell, <laughs> and everybody. Because listen, you guys, I made fun of that movie and I kept rolling my eyes and putting on a big production around people every time it came up. I could not have eaten my hat faster. I was completely wrong. Mm-hmm. They are completely different things. The documentary is phenomenal. Please watch it. I'm like, I already saw it. I don't need to see Tom Hanks acting out a documentary. It's beautiful. It's nothing of the sort. No. And the movie is completely different, and it actually focuses on his relationship with one particular guy who's a journalist. But it shows you how much he affected one man, and therefore millions. Millions. Of others. It's beautiful. I'm not giving anything away, but there's one moment where they're running behind and you can tell like everybody on set is like kind of annoyed and somebody goes how how far behind are we and they said 73, 73 minutes. 73 minutes, yeah. And he goes the reporter who's there waiting to interview Mr. Rogers goes how often does this happen and somebody goes every day. And the reason they were running behind <laughs> oh God. Is because he was visiting with a -A Make-A-Wish kid. Uh Uh-huh, which he apparently did every day. He met with someone that wrote to him or who asked to be with him. It's incredible. And if you follow social media, you would have seen this and you could have done this. I, right after I saw the movie, it was total kismet, was at our local bookstore. And they always, for like the month of November and December, have a thing of books at the register. And if you want to donate, you can. Uh-huh. And they always, for ours, give to the LA Children's Hospital, which is always an amazing place mm-hmm. to give blood or donate any of your local hospitals mm-hmm. so i said oh where is it going to the hospital and i said yeah and they're like do you want to buy one i said yeah what are the choices now they were all great mm-hmm. and i love giving books to anyone of any age but i had literally watched it the night before and i'm like i'll take the who is fred rogers yeah 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 <laughs> <laughs> but you guys please watch it please it's beautiful there's it's, a lot we can learn from I, that man oh my god <sighs> and i was saying even just from an artistic perspective like whatever we're in entertainment we're writers we're performers we're constantly watching with a critical Mm -hmm. eye whether we mean to or not right and i said right away this is not a linear film there's some time whatever i said i am jealous that i didn't write this yeah it's so good it's great the way it's pieced together is Mm -hmm. beautiful Mm -hmm. the imagery is beautiful and the man 
yep. is beautiful. It just totally. everything about it's great. It's a good feel good, non overwhelming way absolutely to start twenty twenty. Yep. So we're all getting back to the grindstone. Jessica, I've been Let's working on my impression of you over the holidays. Oh, Apparently God. it's pretty good. Oh God. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe that's coming in twenty twenty two. Uh we'll be <laughs> <laughs> we'll be back here next week, you guys. Happy New Year. We love you. I hope you had wonderful all holidays. <laughs> if things were rough, uh, it's okay. We're here. Is that me? <laughs> That's you. <laughs> <laughs> Only sometimes I can do it deeper. Why do I have a feeling that your dad helped you with no. your impression of me? <laughs> That's a woman. <laughs> we'll see you next week, y'all. Bye. Bye. Bye.